Hey everybody, it's Travis here. Today I want to show you uh, an interesting feature in 3ds Max that enables you to take a, a simple plane, just a simple piece of geometry, and turn it into a fabric-like material. So as you can see here in the scene, I've got uh, just a small table with a plane. We've got uh, a material applied to it. As you can see in my modifier stack, I've got an edit mesh a cloth and a UVW map to get my materials on there and again we've got this little towel rack here and it as well has some fabric that we're gonna that we're gonna create in just a second so what we want to do is actually apply the the gravity to this material so that it actually hangs like uh, a fabric so to do that we have to turn this plane into a mesh so when we select our plane, we'll take a look at the segments. You can see that we've got uh, 82 and 88. So we've got quite a number of segments. And we come up to the UVW map. That's pretty straightforward. I just used uh, a 2 inch um, segment length essentially to get the material mapping correct. And now what we want to do is apply that edit mesh. So we'll just apply that edit mesh modifier on top and then we'll come to the cloth modifier and we'll add that as well. So what I need to do is decide what I'm going to use as a collider object. So that's essentially what's going to stop this fabric from hitting the ground plane once we simulate it. So as you can see over here on this plane we've got the cloth and if I come to that modifier you'll see that there's an option here for object properties. So what we've done is we've taken cylinder 2, which is this tabletop, and we've made that the, the collision object. We enable collisions, and then the tablecloth itself, we choose cloth, and we choose a preset. So for this one, I chose satin, and we'll hit OK. And let's begin setting up this one here on the towel rack. So I'm going to come to my cloth modifier. Oh and I'm gonna to go to object properties and I'm gonna choose plane one and create the cloth we'll add the preset this one let's make it uh, a wet cloth that kind of makes sense it is a, a towel so we'll leave the collision object off for that one and we want to add another object so this is going to be cylinder four I believe so I'll add that and now that we have cylinder 4 selected we can select the collision object so we'll say OK and now that you see that we're still in the modifier we can actually get a simulation of this but before I do that I'm just gonna move this plane over top of the table so you can see them both simulate so just grab that and I want it to be centered over the top so what I'll do is I'll choose wireframe so I know exactly where it is and if I zoom in close I can see the outline of my table we'll just move that a little bit more so it's centered and as you can see I've got quite a number of segments on this piece and quite a number of segments on this piece as well so we'll take that back to the shaded We'll go back into a perspective view and we'll select this cloth again here and let's see if we can simulate this. So that goes pretty quick. It's going to do all 100 frames and as you can see it's resting on top of the cylinder much like a piece of fabric would. Now there's some other properties obviously in here you want to make sure that self collision is checked that way it doesn't go through itself when it bounces down and once you get to the final scene you can actually collapse your modifier stack and keep this as a grouped object so that's pretty handy if you want to uh, emulate a fabric look you don't always have to have the animation in place once it's done animating you can simply collapse this modifier stack and that makes that fabric static in its state that you see now. So we'll just cancel this one and we'll come over here and see how this one applies on a different sort of surface. So I'll just adjust my view 
so we can see it happen a little bit better. Now let's see what happens here when we select the cloth modifier and simulate this one. So that's pretty neat. That's two situations you might use a cloth modifier uh, for a tablecloth. You could do this sort of thing for curtains, for say some sheets on a bed, and it'd be the same process for all of them. Now don't worry about the material mapping deforming here. Once you actually do your render, you're going to see the material mapped just as it should. So that's creating uh, a fabric in 3ds Max. Thanks for watching. Bye now.